This presentation covers the topic of SWOT analysis and gap analysis. The SWOT analysis is often conducted within a cruciform chart so as to focus attention on the key strengths, key weaknesses, key opportunities and threats. The strengths and weaknesses are internal and are said to be relative to the competition. That is, a strength is something that you are better at than your competitors, so you can use this to gain competitive advantage. Similarly, a weakness is something where the competitors are better than you, and therefore you may be at a competitive disadvantage. The opportunities and threats emanate from external sources and are said to be present for all industry members. The purpose of the SWOT is to allow us to assess the changes in the environment in relation to our ability to deal with them. For example, if something changed and we had the right resources, it presents an opportunity. But if we lack the resources, the same issue could present a threat. Ideally, we want to convert the weaknesses into strengths and then to match the strengths with the opportunities. However, if we remedy a weakness, then what used to be seen as a threat may well become an opportunity. Another way of thinking about developing a good strategy is to build on the strengths, address or remedy the weaknesses, grasp the opportunities and avoid or minimise the threats. Examples of typical strengths might be a strong brand, a highly skilled workforce that is not matched by the competitors, a proven product innovation capability, or access to strategic locations with a strong geographic coverage, or perhaps a logistical capability. Examples of typical weaknesses could include a lack of capital or high gearing levels, making it difficult to finance future strategies. Perhaps a recent run of poor financial performance, or indeed poor management information systems hindering management decision making. Also perhaps low market coverage and market share, making it difficult to compete effectively. Typical opportunities might include elements such as a growing markets in emerging economies, or perhaps favourable trade agreements with overseas countries, or the opportunity to exploit new technology, which will also incidentally require the resources to be able to take advantage of this. Typical threats might include the competitor actions, or perhaps adverse economic conditions. Often changes can be seen as opportunities by some companies, or threats by others. For example, the recent Brexit negotiations in the UK. This indicates the relative subjective nature of the SWOT analysis. The key to a good SWOT is prioritising the elements. It is possible to use what we describe as a weighting and ranking system to do this. The example here illustrates where we have assigned a potential weighting of importance to the organisation to each element and also given it a ranking. We can then create what we call a weighted ranking by multiplying the weighting by the ranking assigned to each element and this creates what we call the weighted ranking score in the end column. We could then complete this for the weaknesses, opportunities and threats and the next slide shows us how we might use this to determine the best strategic option. So it's suggested that we can review various strategic options by examining the overall weighted ranking of the strategy. And this is arrived at by taking into account the elements of the SWOT that contribute to the achievement of the strategy. If this is then computed for each strategic option, the best options can be determined. But strategy is not based on numbers. And although this might help us, we should never reduce strategy to a numerical exercise. The analysis might help us explore the possibilities available, but the approach can be too deterministic. In fact, Hill and Westbrook undertook some research which was published in 1997 and identified that many companies compiled a SWOT analysis, but then failed to use it in the subsequent stages of the strategy development. Let's move on to look at gap analysis. Gap analysis fits into the strategic management process when reviewing how well the current strategy is working. We can create a graph of our objective over a period of time which is usually in years as this is strategic. The objective could be a profit target or perhaps the number of staff required to be recruited over the next five years to meet demand 
or in fact anything that is quantifiable. Then, given our current strategy, we can forecast where we will get to if we continue with the current strategy. In this case, we have a gap. The SWOT is then used to generate ideas on how the gap can be closed. It's always worth remembering that an option is to review the objectives, as it may be that in the face of a financial crisis, there is no way we will meet the original objectives, and therefore we may need to reassess them so as to target something more realistic given the current business environment. When thinking about gap analysis, accountants are well equipped to be able to assess the size of the gap and just how big a problem we will have if we don't do something about it. Accountants are also able to assist in evaluating whether strategies are in fact sufficient to close the gap. And as already mentioned, SWOT analysis should be used to develop the future strategies. This video is part of a series of short videos that explain specific aspects of the strategic management framework and cover some of the strategy models that can be used in the analysis, formulation, implementation and review and control of strategy and the role of the management accountant. This presentation is provided as part of the support materials for the book Management Accounting in Support of Strategy by me, Graham S. Pitcher and published by Business Expert Press.